You've probably heard about Seed Studio and devices they make, and they do make a lot of devices and sensors. Well, today we will be looking at one device called SenseCap Indicator that packs a lot of things inside of it, but we'll start in a couple of seconds. This video was in the making for a long, long, long time. I think it's been over 6 months since I've received this device for testing. And actually, I've been using it all of the time, but not for what it was made. I was using it for what it was made, but I was running it on the demo or pre-installed firmware. Let's look first at the specs of the device. There are 4 flavors of the device, D1, D1S, D1L and D1 Pro. The difference between devices is what sensors are packed, D1 and D1N do not have any sensors inside, while D1 Pro also features LoRa which is not available in D1 and D1S. It includes T-Box sensor, CO2 sensor, groove temperature and humidity sensor and it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. All of the devices feature 3.95 inch capacitive RGB touchscreen. Screen resolution is 480 by 480 pixels, and that is for its purpose more than enough. You will need to provide 5 volts, 1 amp power supply via the USB-C cable, but the intriguing part is the processor, or to be fair, processors, yes, it has a multiple of them. First one is a ESP32 S3, dual core 32 bit LX7 microprocessor that can go up to 240 MHz features 8 gigs of RAM that you can use, but there is also inside RP2040, yes, the RP2040, dual ARM Cortex that can go up to 133 megs and has additional 2 megs of RAM that can be used for your apps. If you need or if you want or for some of your use cases, you may need SD card, which is not provided by the device, but it does feature the SD card support or SD card slot. For connectivity besides the USB-C, which we already mentioned for powering and programming, we also have the Wi-Fi connectivity, 2.4 GHz network is supported, Bluetooth 5.0 and depending on the model you get, you also may get LoRa inside, but only if you go with the D1L and the D1 Pro. As I mentioned, if you get the D1S or D1 Pro, you will also get some internal and external sensors, such as CO2 sensor, T-Box sensor, plus externally attached temperature and humidity sensor via the Groove module. Yes, this device supports Groove module based sensors, which of course Seed Studio has plenty of, so you can upgrade or buy additional sensors at the time of the purchase. For example, you can buy the Grove wireless module, RGB strip, multiplexer, temperature sensor and some additional sensors that are available directly from the website. Firmware that is pre-flashed and is available out of box will give you all you need to track air quality data for your home or the room where the sensor is. Since the device has Wi-Fi connectivity, it can also synchronize time and date with the NTP servers on the internet if you allow it to do so and the device itself will collect the data and present you for each of the sensors two graphs. One is the day, the last 24 hours and the other one is week worth of data for each of the sensors. And this is how I've been running it for now 6 months. It was adequate for the use I wanted. I wanted to have in the living room a sensor that I could glance to and see what is the air quality inside the living room. Ok, so there are other things that you can do with this device, but first let's talk about the elephant in the room. Is this device for you? Do you see yourself building firmware for RP2040 and ESP32 boards? And I'm not talking here about the ESP Home or Tarsmota, I'm talking here about the Espressif and the Arduino. Remember that unfortunately today still we have the issue of the displays. They are not easy to add to any project that you want to add them to. Especially if some additional tools are not used. If you want to start with this device, there are two demos that you can play with. Both of those demos are really neat, but they will require you to dive into them. Not just flash pre-made firmware, but actually adapt it, basic configuration, the code, and then compile it and flash it to the device itself. First one is demo use of SenseCap indicator with the OpenAI. In this demo you will be able to use keyboard on the screen to type in the commands and get a response from both ChatGPT and also DAL-E. 
Second demo, of course, is interesting to all the users that are using Home Assistant and MQTT. It will show you that you can have a device that is via the MQTT hooked up to Home Assistant. So on one side it sends data from the sensors to Home Assistant, but on the other side you can use the touchscreen to control the lights in Home Assistant directly. Actually, there is one additional home end from the Yoast Home. It's called Sensecap Config, which is adaptation of the original Sensecap indicator software or the code for the Home Assistant integration that has a bit of twist in it. It retains all the functionality that was originally brought by the Seed Studio, but it also implements JSON. And JSON is here just to make it easier for you to configure or adapt your Home Assistant integration with this device. Normally, if you would change the name of the device or if you want to control any other device from within Sensecap Indicator, you would have to recompile the firmware and upload to the device. This one is using the advantage of the SD card and it's using SD card to store the JSON file where you keep the configuration for this device. So instead of compiling the firmware each time you want to change something on the device, you can use this repository, which of course will be also linked down in a video description, to, yes, import data from the JSON file. Let's look at some of the other use cases Seed Studio thinks that this device is good for. For example, in this case, it says that it can be used as a local LoRa hub, where you can connect it via the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or LoRa protocol to the IoT sensor. You can use smartphone to input the data there, and then you can relay the data from local LoRa hub to the Apple, Amazon or Google smart assistants. Plus, of course, you can use the Sensecap cloud service, and this is a cloud service provided by the Seed Studio that allows you to connect your IoT or LoRa devices locally on the cloud services. For some of the use cases they are mentioning here, this is a great device for public area air monitor, weather station display, assets monitoring, for example, your digital wallet, Groove Sensor Hub, which is how it comes out of the box, digital album, of course, don't forget the resolution is 480 by 480 pixels, on-site alarm, SOP reminder, or chat GPT indicator, or response machine. Since this is a Seed Studio device, you get access to excellent documentation. And I do really mean excellent documentation as always. It will guide you through all the steps you need to set the devices up. For example, in this wiki, we get all of the information about the device, most of the stuff I already mentioned, but you also get the schematics or system diagram, you have information about the GPIO pins, the button functionality, the groove pinout, and anything else you need to develop for this type of the device. Then we also have access to the Sensecap Indicator User Manual, which is a PDF document that more or less does the same and it also guides you through all the steps you need to do the firmware update or compile the firmware for both ESP board and also RP2040. But as I said on the wiki, you also have information on how to hook up Home Assistant to this device, how to compile the firmware, where the code is, what you have to change, and everything you need to do in order to get this project up and running. Then we have the same information about the LoRa communication, how to set it up on this device, matter support on this device, and also chat GPT or Dell E support. For the final thoughts, the biggest feature of this device is also the biggest problem here, at least in my opinion. This device in my opinion, is more for startup companies that want to develop their products or for commercial companies that want to release commercial product very soon and want to have off-the-shelf hardware. Of course, yes, it can be used by home users, power users, but in my opinion, that's also a way to lose a lot of potential for this device. If you consider the price of the device, and this is starting from $49 for a device that has no sensors, up to the Pro version that has all of the sensors and also LoRa support for $89. The price is okay if you look at the capabilities and the specification of the device. But the biggest question and mystery here is, will the home users be able to use specification of this device, full specification of the device, and use all of its capabilities? In my opinion, only some or small amount of power users will be able to use full functionality of this device. If you are a tinker and want to play with a device like this, it can be fun. And if you do get it and do something, don't forget to post a link and share what you did. Maybe a LoRa gateway for Home Assistant. Anyone? Anyone? LoRa gateway for Home Assistant? But until then, don't forget to like this video if you did like it. If you have a question or comment, leave it down in the comment section below. 
And of course, I would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, shared or commented on my videos. If you too want to support the video, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member, by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and getting something there. Or, as always, you can do a super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.